Hey everyone, uh, Arcology's here. I thought I'd do a quick video on resampling. I do want to do more videos and tutorials, but I've just been so swamped with real life and work recently. It's been very difficult uh, to get a lot of time to do kind of longer video and editing sessions. But someone did have a question about resampling and instead of kind of typing up a response, I figured I'd just do a quick video because this is something I can illustrate pretty quickly. If anyone has any questions about something that I can do a video on, I'm definitely open for doing that. So just, you know, please keep on asking me questions and I'm more than happy to answer them. Um, anyways, resampling, um, essentially what I want to do for resampling, I have a ride sample here. And on this ride sample, I have uh, a two band EQ and a filter effect applied. And so what I want to do is I want to get this ride sample, apply these two uh, effects and get it on that pad. That's resampling. Um, obviously, uh, you can do a lot of creative things with resampling and it can go far more in depth. I use resampling a lot to layer pads and atmospheric sounds to blend things together. Um, I resample breaks a ton. Uh, another really cool thing on the SP-16 with this sequencer down here, you can kind of um, program a drum break, resample the whole break, and then apply effects to that and resample it again, whatever you want to do. Um, once you start getting the hang of resampling, it, it really kind of opens up uh, your workflow quite a bit. So anyways, I want to take this uh, sample, these two effects, put it on that pad. So what I want to do is I want to go into the sampling edit menu in the upper right hand corner. So this is just a sampling menu on the SP-16. Uh, down here in the lower left we have a source. You can either your line in, which is where you would typically sample from if you're recording vinyl or uh, YouTube or whatever. Just whatever whatever is going through the line in. Or resample. We want to resample. Your recording threshold here is whatever threshold you need the audio to meet in order for it to start recording. You can turn it off if you just want to do it manually. If you want to just hit the record button manually, I set it at 50. Record length, this is in bars. Um, anyways, yeah, so once you have that set up, I want to start recording. And when you do that, what you can do is you can either hit the pad just to record the, whatever, whatever pad you hit, or I put a step in the sequencer here so I can just hit the play button. So I'm going to hit record, and obviously it's waiting for that audio to pass that threshold before it starts recording. So I'm going to hit play. Okay. And what it did is it recorded that sample on that on this pad with the two effects applied. So what I want to do is I want to save those changes, save and replace here, and go back. And so now this pad contains that new sample. And what I can do is if I, I mean, I can go in here and sculpt the EQ further. I can go ahead, since these effects were applied, I can remove them now and apply different effects. I can put a delay, a distortion, whatever you want on it, um, chorus, whatever. You can do whatever you want to it. And that's what really kind of opens up uh, resampling to kind of the creative area of uh, making music on these samplers is you can get really kind of cool um, effects. And you can start re getting really grungy too if you start resampling at lower bit rates. And with a filter on the SP-16, you can kind of uh, do some sweeping on the filter and, and record that live when you resample and uh, get some other really cool stuff going. Uh, it's kind of a really fun thing to do. Uh, I encourage anyone to try it. It's really easy on the SP-16. It's really easy on the Polyend Tracker. Uh, it's I mean, even on the older rack samplers, it's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, so that's really resampling in a nutshell.